Hi everyone, welcome back to Lone Fox. I hope you're having a great day. Today's video, we are gonna be focusing on gift giving. We are gonna be creating a couple of really cute DIY gift ideas which are perfect for absolutely any occasion. Birthday, for a graduation, for a housewarming. These are just last minute ideas that are simple, easy, super cute, personalized, and affordable. That was a lot of adjectives. Are those even adjectives? I mean, I know it's a word that like helps it Oh my god, I have to stop. I have to stop. I am also extremely excited to announce that today's video is actually sponsored by Canon. I'm going to be using the Pixma TS9521C crafting printer, which is such a cool printer. It actually prints up to 12 by 12 borderless sheets of paper, which is perfect if you're a scrapbooker. I used to do scrapbooking back in the day, as many of you guys know, and I would have loved this printer. But I'm very excited for today's video, and I would love for you guys to subscribe to my channel if you are not already. So give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe. It is 100% free, and let's go ahead and jump on into some of the features that this printer has to offer and then we're going to start incorporating them into the DIY projects and you guys the projects are really cute so definitely stay tuned uh, you guys do not know how excited I was to get the Canon Pixma TS9521C crafters all-in-one printer on my doorstep. I've actually been in the market for a printer for a little bit now, and I personally love how this printer is designed to complement your artistic side. So it's innovative and it's packed with a variety of creative features such as 12 by 12 borderless printing, which is my personal favorite, versatile paper support, and loaded into the printer already are some pre-made patterns, which I really like this feature because you can go ahead and print these to whatever size you want to go ahead and print them to. So here I'm sharing with you guys the 12 by 12 borderless feature. You are able to print 12 by 12 sheets of cardstock and turn them into scrapbooking patterned paper or really whatever you want to do. You can even print out digital scrapbook pages on here, which I think is really fun. But on top of that, if you're not a creative person at all, you can also just use this for your everyday printing needs too, such as photos, school projects, documents, invitations, and a lot more. So I think if you're in the market for a printer, this is great because it really blends that kind of creative side, but it also blends your everyday printing as well so you kind of have the perfect mix of both. I also want to go ahead and touch on a couple of my personal key favorite features including the five color individual ink system so if you run out of a specific ink cartridge that is not a problem you can actually continue printing even if you run out of a certain color. There is versatile printing, copying, and scanning with up to 12 by 12 paper support, booklet layout, and even an auto document feeder for scanning multiple page documents. The printer features a simple interface with a 4.3 inch LCD touch screen and it just basically allows you to navigate the printer super simply and last but not least, memory card support, so you can print photos directly from a camera or dedicated memory card. If you guys would like to check out any more information on this printer, definitely use my link in the description box below to head over and find out any more details or shop your very own Canon Pixma TS9521C crafter printer. But let's get into today's projects. For our first project, I really wanted to create something that was totally customizable. So this is a project that you can kind of customize and really, really make and tailor for the person that you're giving it to. So I'm starting off with some resin mixture. I'm going to mix up equal parts of my resin for a couple of minutes with a stir stick just so I have a nice, smooth resin to start working with. Once the resin's all mixed up, you can then go ahead and add any additives you want to. You can add glitter, you can add little flakes. Um, I'm adding gold flakes in particular here. I'll link these ones below for you guys. I got them online and I'm just adding a couple of them. I really want the gold flakes to be pretty sparse and not like super incorporated into the resin. And as far as the mold goes, I ended up using this domino mold here, which is meant actually for resin, of course. And I'm going to be using some dried flowers as well, just to kind of add a little pop of color. Originally, I was going to go ahead and use these white little buds, which I thought would be so cute mixed with the gold flake. But the thing is, is once I placed them in the mold and kind of adjusted them where I wanted them to be, and I poured the resin on top, the little rosebuds themselves actually floated to the surface and was making it not lay flat anymore. So I actually ended up just leaving the couple that I originally poured with the little rosebuds as is and I just kind of poked them down as much as I possibly could but I do suggest when you like put things into your dominoes just make sure that they're really lightweight and something that's going to be able to be kind of pressed down by the resin as opposed to float to the surface so I ended up opting for these little orange petals which I loved so much and then I poured my resin over the top of each of them making sure to fill the mold up to the top Ooh. 
Now at the top left, if you can kind of see that cluster there, I had to make a new batch of resin and those ones ended up with so much more gold flake in them, but I think it's totally fine. I like the variety, but I personally prefer the more clear based ones that have a little bit of gold and a little bit of petal, but the other ones, they turned out very, very gold and vibrant, which is totally fine. So once I popped them all out of the mold, I was kind of examining them and I realized I needed to go ahead and fill in all of the holes on the dominoes and the lines. So I actually opted for using a white paint pen. Now you can totally use whatever color you want to, but I thought the white would look nice on here and in the paint pen form, it's just so much easier to use you guys. So I went ahead and I filled in all of the dots and lines on all of my dominoes, which was a little bit time consuming, but it was honestly kind of therapeutic at the same time. I listened to music, filled in all the dots, and I love the outcome of these dominoes. You can also totally consider using your printer to print out patterned paper or photos or little decals to put in your dominoes as well. For our second project, I'm taking inspiration from a planter that I created a long time ago and creating more of a smaller scale one, but it's still super cute. So I'm starting off with a little glass vase that I got from the dollar store, and I'm also using some clay as well. This is a large chunk of clay that I'm gonna be rolling out into a sheet because we're actually gonna be covering the entire glass vessel to make it more so look like a ceramic vase. So I thought the first thing that would be the easiest was to roll it out so it's pretty even as opposed to smashing it on the exterior of our glass. So once I had it rolled out, I rolled my glass vessel on the top of it, as you can see here, and I wrapped it with clay. If you're wrapping a vessel like this in clay, I do think rolling it out first just makes your clay kind of stretch a bit longer and it also makes it so much easier to apply on the vase itself. So as you can see, I was able to cover a good majority of it with what I rolled out, but if there were any cracks or crevices or nooks or crannies or any of the sort, you can go back and fill them in with clay and kind of smooth them out with your fingers or an acrylic roller. And then also on the top rim, as you can see here, I'm just folding down the excess clay. That's just gonna give you a nice clean finish on the top. I am of course going to add some ears to this so we can turn it into a really cute fox. So I grabbed a little bit of white clay and I just kind of formed it into the shape of an ear and I'm just pressing it and mending it to the top. I'm also creating one for the right side as well. So you're gonna need two of these, but totally keep in mind guys that you can really make whatever animal you want. Like if you wanted to do an elephant or different kind of animal, just make different features that kind of look like that animal and then you can go back and paint them afterwards. Now I'm using the back of a paintbrush to go ahead and kind of mar the clay a little bit or give a little bit of an emboss around it just to add some detail. This is going to be kind of the head shape and nose of our fox there. You're going to want to let your clay piece fully cool off before painting. So I'm starting off with a dark orange color. This is called Pueblo by Folk Art, I believe. And I'm going in, I'm going to be doing two coats of this orange color on the top here. So that end dent line that I created kind of basically shows me where I'm supposed to end this orange color and then also kind of bring it down to create the nose. I'm also bringing it up to the ears, of course, because we're going to add a little bit of white back to those in the center. Now, the entire rest of this piece is going to be painted with a color very similar to the clay itself. In that emboss we created around the entire perimeter of the piece, I'm just adding this dark brown paint here. This was an old paint sample that I had, so I'm going in and just kind of filling in that indent with the brown. And then to achieve a speckled look, I actually went ahead and mixed a little bit of that brown paint with some water to almost create like a watercolor, which I'm going to flick from the paintbrush onto the exterior of our vase. So I really wanted this to kind of be focused in the white area, but I didn't mind if it got on at the orange part at the top. I also went ahead and used a little bit of black paint to kind of fill in the nose and also dot in the eyes as well. And then last but not least, we did need a little bit more white paint to fill in those ears, which I think that the ears really made this piece shine. Once I added the ears, I was like, oh my God, Gosh, this actually turned out so cute. It would be such a nice gift for somebody to create their favorite animal as like a cute little flower pot or planter for their room. 
On the outside here, I'm brushing on some watered down brown paint to give it just a little bit more of a distressed vibe because I felt like the white was too stark and I wanted it to almost look a little bit aged and not perfectly brand new. So I thought this totally gave me the vibe that I wanted to go for. So I painted that on there and to lock it in and finish off the piece, I'm using some Sculpey gloss glaze and I'm just doing a full generous coat of this on the outside. I think this really completes any ceramic project. Now, if you don't wanna go for a gloss finish, they do also offer a matte finish as well, but I really loved the gloss in this case. So this is our finished off Fox planter, but we also have to make a little card to go along with it if you're gifting this to a friend. So I went ahead and I printed out two of these cards, which I'll link below for you guys. I actually created these as printables. So if you wanna go ahead and download them, you totally can. Just make sure to print them at a borderless eight and a half by 11, cut them in half as shown here. And then I'm going to be using a scoreboard just to score right down the center and create our very own greeting card. If you print this on cardstock, it is perfect. I am absolutely in love with this next project. We're actually gonna be using the printer itself to create a majority of the, I guess, pieces that we're gonna be using for this project. So the first thing I'm doing is printing out a ton of these really cute patterns that I created for you guys. So these will also be linked as free printable downloads in the description box below if you wanna go ahead and download them. Once you have them downloaded, you can print them out on your printer. And I created quite a few different patterns for you guys to choose from. So you can either select one or all of them because we are gonna be creating an interchangeable phone case. So you can change up the pattern within your phone case every single day if you want to. So starting off with one of the patterns I liked the most, which was this abstract shapes here. I'm just going through and cutting out the pattern itself. Now you could totally crop this out of the document as well. So you don't have to print any of the additional stuff, but I'm just cutting out the pattern and then I'm using the foam from the inside of the phone case to go ahead and trace it onto the backside of our paper there. Now you're also going to want to ensure that you're using a cardstock and not just like a printer paper, that way it's a bit more durable. I also used a ruler to square off all of those corners because as you can see the foam little insert piece originally had rounded corners, but the inside of the phone case itself actually is a fully kind of rectangle shape. So I cut it out to size and once you have this cut out, you can actually just slip it right into your phone case like this. But of course we're also going to need to cut out the camera little hole. So I just placed that on the inside and used a pencil to trace out the camera hole and then I used an exacto knife on top of just like a piece of cardstock or cardboard. I just cut out that eye hole that way our camera is still able to be fully functional of course. And once you have your first pattern fully cut out and everything is nice and perfect, you can actually use it as a template to cut out even more patterns. The thing I love about this is if you're gifting this to somebody, you can gift them the clear phone case, but you can also gift a ton of different like almost phone case skins that they could simply insert in the back of their phone case. And it almost makes it look like they have a brand new one every single day or every single week, however often they wanna kind of swap that out. And I also think this is a really cute idea because you can totally print out personalized photos. You can kind of make little collages or just print patterns like I did here because that's also a really cute idea. For our last and final project, we're gonna be using clay again as the base. So I'm pulling off a little chunk here and we're gonna be rolling out a cone shape. So I'm kind of rolling between my hands and tapering the cone up to a bit of a point. I don't want it to be too pointy though. And this is essentially going to be a cute little ring holder that we're gonna then go and paint once it is fully baked. So I cut off the bottom to make it nice and flat. And then for our next piece, we're gonna be creating an earring stud holder, which I've seen these before on websites like Anthropology or West Elm, and they're normally pretty pricey. So I wanted to create our very own I'm rolling out a little circle of clay here. I'd probably say this ended up being about three and a half to four inches in diameter. And once I had it rolled out to the size I wanted, I went ahead and used a needle to poke holes. Now the holes that we're poking are gonna be for the earrings, of course. So you're gonna want an even amount since there are typically even pairs of earrings. But if you have one-offs, just poke as many holes as you'd like. I think I ended up poking about 12 holes. I placed this over the top of a small little bowl here and I'm gonna be baking this in the oven over the bowl. That way it almost 
almost has this rounded form to it. And when you place this on top of your tabletop, it will allow for some elevation on the underside. That way the post of the stud earring isn't like touching the tabletop directly or not sitting in the piece at all. Um, it's just gonna be kind of floating on there. So I'm baking these for about 25 minutes each and then we're pulling them out and giving them a little bit of a paint job. This is what I love about all these projects is how customizable each one is. So if you're making this project, you know, for someone's birthday, you can customize it to their favorite color palette. You can add patterns, prints, textures, whatever you think that they're gonna like. So I'm starting off on the right side and kind of just doing this organic shape in this tan color. Then working into this peachy pink color, I'm gonna go ahead and just right next to the tan, I'm going to be drawing a line about an eighth of an inch away and we're gonna be creating another organic shape. This is just gonna be kind of like a very abstract piece. So I'm painting it as you can see here. This is the shape I'm going for and I'm gonna fill that in with the pink. And our third and final shape is kind of hard to see, but it is a super, super, super light tan color. Once it's dried, you can kind of see it a little bit more there. I also opted to just spray a little bit of gold spray paint. I find this is so much prettier than like a gold acrylic paint. So I just sprayed a little bit in my container there and used a small little detail brush to add a couple of lines and a couple of dots just to kind of give a little bit more detail to this piece. I also went ahead and painted the little ring form. I started off with the lightest shade on the top tip there. And this kind of started to look like a candy corn as I was painting it. So I needed to change that up pretty quickly. Underneath that, I'm going in with a little bit of a darker tan shade, so it's almost like a monochromatic tone on tone, and I really think this would have been cute if I left it as is, but it gave me very candy corn vibes. So I wanted to break up that design a little bit with some of the gold paint as well. So taking that same detail brush, I'm just doing a thin gold line on the bottom rim of that tan color there. And then from this, I'm going to be creating a couple of little lines that go down. So they're almost like little eyelashes, but I just like the way that the pattern ended up looking in the end. You can totally paint this however you'd like to, but I just did random lines at varying lengths. And of course, a generous coating of gloss glaze just to finish these off and seal in our design. And to pair with this gift, I thought it would be cute to create a little DIY gift card holder. So I printed this paper on the printer, of course, and I'm cutting it down to four and a half inches by five and a half inches. And on our five and a half inch side, we're gonna be scoring it at two and a half and at five. So essentially, once we fold this up, we're going to be having a little half inch tab, which you can see there. And I'm going to be adding on top of that half inch tab a little bit of double-sided tape. That way we can go ahead and adhere this closed. And it ends up basically being like a smashed down toilet paper roll, as you can see here. Now what I'm doing is going in with a ruler and X-Acto knife, and I'm just cutting a slit wide enough for my ribbon. So you guys are going to see what I'm talking about in a second here. Once I cut the slit that's wide enough, I'm also going to be cutting out a little slit underneath that and almost creating a notch, which is going to be cut out of both sides of the paper. So this is going to be going through both sides, as you can see here. Once you have that notch cut out, you can slide your ribbon through the notch. This is a really cute little yellow velvet ribbon. You can slide your gift card through the notch over the top of the ribbon, pushing it down, and then simply tie a knot on the top or a bow or whatever you wanna have, just making sure that your gift card is secured on the inside and you can easily pull it in and out of this really cute little gift card holder. I used to make these all the time when I used to scrapbook. I hope this video gave you some ideas if you are looking for a gift idea or a DIY project to create for somebody. I really wanted each of these projects to be easy enough to create, but the outcome to look almost store-bought. So it looks like a really nice high quality piece in the end, but it's something that really anybody could create. So that was kind of like the challenge when I was coming up with these projects. I really wanted them to be simple to recreate, but if you made an error here or there, it really wasn't a big deal and it honestly just added to the handmade quality of the piece. I personally am so obsessed with the dominoes. I don't know why, I just think it's so cool how we can create our own set of dominoes with some resin and glitter or whatever you want to add to it. And also, you guys, do not forget to check out today's video sponsor, Canon, and their incredible Pixma TS9521C creative crafting printer. It truly is great. So if you're in the market for a printer, I think this one's perfect because you can get your normal printing needs, you know, like documents, papers, schoolwork, whatever it might be, but you also have that creative freedom to go to 12 by 12 pages or print large artwork pieces, whatever you want. It has you covered. So check the link in the description box below for the print and I will catch you guys all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day and yeah, bye guys.